after you using the router, unlock it and roll the bit down so it's no accidents. These two holes here are part of what hold the four inch in place. And the reason why I left them on there is because in previous versions of this, we've actually mounted external crossovers up here. And I've kept those on for additional screw points. Like if I'm gonna put a six inch down here or an eight inch or something like that. What we have to remove are these two pieces right here and here. And that will allow the six by nine to go in with no issue. There's a screw here. We'll put foam all across the back of this and that'll pull it into this door nice and tight. This door panel is made out of fiberglass. You're cutting it, be careful. I suggest putting some blue tape over here and here to try to minimize the amount of cracks or dust and all that. Put a mask on so you don't breathe in the dust that's gonna be cut from this because it is bad for you. Grab the bracket, put it in place. Test fit your six by nine. Fits perfect. And we're gonna put some foam on the back of this. There's already foam on the back of the speakers. That one. And all we have to do is screw it back into place. But there is a trick to the wiring. On the plug itself, this orange one, there is a bunch of wires going into it. Inside this box right here is the factory amplifier for the system. That factory amplifier only powers this guy right here, it doesn't power this. On the plug, we have a bunch of black wires with white stripes and orange wires. These are the power and ground for the amplifier. There's a solid black wire, which is the remote turn on. And then there is these tan and gray wires here. There's two tans and one gray. The tan, one of them is gonna be the positive and the gray is gonna be the negative. So we have to hook up to these two wires here. Make sure we grab the right ones. We will be pulling the radio out. We can continuity test between the radio and the door. That means while Fernando is finishing prepping these and getting them ready, I'm going to pull out the radio so that he'll be able to continuity test the right wires and get this thing hooked up. Sound like a plan? It sounds like a plan. Awesome. There you go. To get this radio out, we start back here. Start by removing the arm pad. It has four Phillips screws in it that are very fragile. You can use a drill to get them out, just go slow, but definitely don't use a drill to put them back in. What happens is these little silver things here, these are posts, and the posts will just twist right off and break. The fact that those are all still in place, it's quite impressive. Remove the traction control panel, just lifts up and unplugs. Pull your emergency brake back, reach in and unplug the cigarette lighter. There's two 10 millimeter bolts here, and there's also two back here that will shift this whole panel back and make getting it out a little bit easier. Next to the steering wheel, there is a little air cover here that's missing in this one. That'll come off, and behind it is a T15 torque screw, and there's also one in where the ashtray is next to the cigarette lighter. Then behind the ashtray or corn tray is a third one. Pull this pad and shift it all the way back. Gently pull up on the dash. Putting the gear shifter all the way back will also help. The only thing plugged into this is the cigarette lighter. Once that's unplugged, the whole piece will come out. Keep in mind that when you're doing this, the keys have to pass through this hole. So if there's a bunch of crap on the keychain, make sure you remove it. The radio just has two seven millimeters holding it in place. Wiggle it a little bit and pull it free. With the radio out of the dash, we can move on to do some testing. The big plug here that has the two colors on it is the harness we're after. Passenger is going to be light green, dark green for positive and negative. If we tone those, we should hear that top four inch play through here. And we do. That leaves that tan and gray wire. There's no speaker in this door. We're going to continuity test to see which tan out of the two is the one that we want. A continuity test is the little wavy sign here. And what that does is when the two leads touch, it makes a beeping sound. We'll put our first probe on the tan. We'll come over to the door and test over here. 
So on the outside of the door, the far corner is a tan, which is right above the gray, located right here. These are our two signal wires that are gonna now need to be hooked up to our six by nine, bypassing that factory amplifier. Grab the factory harness and plug it in, and look on the other side, you'll see where the wire colors translate out. So the gray, and the tan match up with our white with a black stripe and white. This is the same for every car. However, manufacturers have gotten a little tricky and these speaker wires don't match all the way through now. So though on older cars, this is a great way to see what is positive or negative. On newer cars, not so much, but you can always do the continuity test. One thing to note on this, the red wire here, the accessory, that doesn't exist in this plug. It just has constant 12 volts, the amplified antenna, an illumination, and a ground, but no accessory wire. In these cars, you have to go out and find your own accessory. Or, if you are gonna be integrating into the factory amplifier, Metra does make a harness now that will tap into the data bus in this old car and give you an accessory. Speaker is mounted in place. Let's go and put it on. Speaker number one is done. Let's go and put the door panel back together. This is done. Let's jump to another one. The five and four will fit in here, no issues. But I'm really curious if the six and a half will fit. That's what's kind of racking through my brain. I'm gonna grab a set of six and a half just to make sure, because that would suck if they had fit and I went through the problem of having to make all these and I didn't need to. And it's a perfect fit. Awesome. So that means we don't have to make a bracket to fit the five and a quarter in place, which is spectacular. Now that we have a plan for this, and we know the speaker will fit. There's no reason to just not get the speaker in place and get something checked off the list. This is an old school GM. It uses standard old school GM colors. So we have a dark blue and a light blue on this side. Dark blue is gonna be positive, light blue is gonna be negative. On the other side, there's gonna be a brown and a yellow. The brown is positive. We've also put some foam on the back of the speaker so that when it screws into this plastic bucket here, it's resting on that and not plastic. That way we don't get any rattles or anything like that. We are gonna change out the screws to a smaller head Phillips as opposed to the bigger head seven millimeter that was in there. The reason we're doing that is for the basket on these that bigger head will not fit one done one to go i'm not going to put the grill back on this yet because we still have a bunch of wiring to run and i want to make sure that it doesn't drop down and get in the way of the speaker this is a universal dash kit which means it fits a ton of general motors cars they've been making this dash kit forever i mean i can't even list them all there's a ton of parts but really what we want is this one here that's nice and flush they make this one that oh these are the good old days one of the reasons I wanted to go with the short chassis was to avoid having to go with something like this or something like this that sticks out. I prefer to go with this nice flat one. What they give you are these here. These allow you to go into all these cars, but finding the two that you need, well, that can be a little bit more interesting. To do that, the old practice is grab the radio and we'll match up which ones we think we need, which I think are these two here in the middle. They snap into place, and if we set them over the top of each other, they line up pretty good. The final test will be just to take it into the car and set it and see if it goes and lines up with the screw holes. It lines right up with the dash. There's a nub here and a nub here. Screw, screw. Goes in nice and tight. As you can see there's this metal piece right here. If we were doing a longer radio, we would have to cut that out of the way to make room for that. And if you do a double din, you have to cut the whole bracket out altogether and lower the whole radio down. That's right, if you didn't know, you can actually fit a double din in one of these. Metra has a dash kit for this in order to do that, and we have done a video showing you how to do it. Grab our mounting 
sleeve. When installing your sleeve, it has all these little tabs that push up on them. Don't go crazy, you don't need 100 tabs to hold it in place. Just find the ones that overlap the plastic and move those out so that the radio will, will mount in nice and securely. That's all you have to do. Slide the radio into place. You have two looks that you could go with. This look here where the radio sits inside of the trim bezel, or you could leave this on and go for, you know, the whole bigger look. Personally, I kind of like this look better. I'm gonna leave it like that. But I will put this in the box in case they change their mind.